Peace and love to everybody. This is Tony Taylor, the Barber Coach, coming, checking in with you guys. Had a quick message for instructors, individuals who are pursuing uh, becoming a barber instructor. It's just a couple of things that I wanted to discuss with you guys. I just had about maybe a quick six points that I wanted to give you all, just so you know that you're on the right path to becoming a dynamic barber educator. Number one, you cannot afford to not cut hair. Let me be clear, let me say it one more time. You cannot afford to not cut hair as a barber educator. Reason being is because you definitely have to stay sharper than the rest. And I just feel as though when you're in a seat of an educator, you're gonna be a student first. So that means you have to make certain that you put your best foot forward to know what's trending, know about the latest and greatest tools. A lot of the times the students will actually put you up on game as far as what's trending out there, even if you yourself haven't done the research, but you can keep your ear to it um, and understand what's happening within the barber community. And I just feel as though as a dynamic educator, you know, how can one say that they are that or they are a master barber, um, yet you don't cut hair daily. Um, look for the opportunity to cut hair because each and every time that you turn on the clippers, it's a learning moment, you know? So I really wanted to expound upon that very point because, you know, just because you sit in the seat of an educator or a barber educator, that doesn't mean that your journey is over with as far as the clippers are concerned. Now, I do understand, you know, if you have certain ailments, you know, maybe, you know, you have a arthritic condition uh, that would pretty much keep you from operating with the tools or something like that, or maybe other health issues. But if there's nothing but health that's in the way, there's no reason for you not to actually cut hair every single moment that you have the opportunity. So let's just keep that in mind. You must always know that you have never arrived. The moment that you feel as though that you have already arrived, I can guarantee you, your journey is over with. Don't get me wrong. A lot of us operate on productivity, right? As far as barber education is concerned. We wanna make certain that you know our students complete the 1500 hour program here in the state of Illinois. We wanna make certain that they go and take state board examination. We also want to you know possibly set them up with an opportunity to work in a shop that will that, that they can thrive in, right? Don't sit there and just feel as though that you're the man or you're the woman and pretty much people should be, you know, catering to your every beck and call. It doesn't work like that, okay? The one thing about being a barber educator is that it is ego-less, ego-less, all right? And I feel as though in my career, um, I have had moments and times when, you know, I felt I was a little too, you know, big for my britches, you know? And those situations, I guarantee you, when you approach them or when you're in them, you will have certain things that transpire that literally will, you know, knock you down, knock you down a couple of pegs and humble you to let you know, like, hey, you're not as dope as you think you are. There's always somebody that's better than you at a particular thing. You have to keep striving, you have to keep pushing, you have to keep learning, and you have to make certain that you are operating out of a space of humility and humbleness. You know, uh, a lot of what we do here in our industry, we're, we're definitely uh, prideful of our work and the output uh, and the productivity that we bring forth to the game. But you always have to lock in and understand, like, you have to be hungry as your first day as you will with your last. You see what I mean? So let's always stay the course. And again, please never think that you have arrived. My next point that I want to give you guys is this. We have to see snapshots of evolution. The snapshots of evolution, um, let me break this down. What that means is, it's gonna be snapshots of evolution within you, but also in the reflection of you. And guess what that reflection of you would be? That would be your students. So if you have an individual that has never touched a pair of clippers before a day in their life, and they're doing ball heads for the first week or the first couple of days, and they continuously miss a spot, or the clipper grip is inappropriate, or whatever the case may be, we know that we have to revisit those things and we have to make certain that we are providing the proper tutelage in order for them to execute. Because again, the execution should always 
you know, show productivity to what it is that we are trying to train barbers to become. So if they can't go from working on the baldy to working on an all even, to working on a ball fade, to working on a drop fade, we're not doing our job. And a lot of the times we do not have to take the clippers um, out of their hands when they're getting up in their levels, right? However, there are some moments in when understanding the different intelligences, the nine different intelligences that are incorporated with barber education, we have to understand that some people are kinesthetic learners. So that means they have to learn by doing. But on the other side, we do have individuals who can be a combination of both kinesthetic and uh, visual learners. So at that point, we make certain that we have the proper approach in order to show them what it is that they should be doing with a tool and give them the tool back in order for them to execute or duplicate what it is that they were just shown. Um, one of those things that I always find to be common amongst barber college students across uh, the board is that it is less desirable to actually have the clipper in your hand the entire time when it's their cut, right? Um, and I'm just speaking the truth to what it is that I've learned over the years. Um, you, you, you have to make certain that the student remains in the driver's seat during the learning process, right? So this also means that we shouldn't say anything that's demeaning. We shouldn't be little or be raped. We definitely, I'm not saying that we have to have kid gloves on because we're working with adults. However, approach is everything, right? So in order to have the snapshots of the, uh, of the evolution and what I'm speaking of, this has to do with your own personal growth as an educator and understanding that we must respect first because that then is gonna be reciprocated to us. And as we continue to operate in that, we will definitely begin to see the snapshots of their evolution increase. We are at mastery level. The moment that you step into the seat of an educator, you are technically considered a master barber um, by title due to the fact that you have gone through, let's say the prerequisite and the prerequisites and uh, the certification process is concerned. However, let's speak the truth to that situation. If you are at mastery level, going back to point number one, uh, that you can't afford not to cut hair, that means it's practice, 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 practice. Now, it has been debated that, you know, it takes 10,000 hours to master something. Um, and it's been debated, uh, debated on many levels. However, what we do need to understand is this. If we practice in a, in a space and place in which we are looking to uh, build to our skill set, have that skill set be beneficial to the learner, we got to understand these learners are going to be a direct reflection of us and what it is that we put out. So it's really important that we have to stay locked in as a student and understand that the learning never ends. The last point that I want to give you guys is that it's going to take work in order to make these things happen. We can't turn around and just think that, you know, because we have a license or because we put in our time in school that at the end of the day, you know, we can just show up to work, do somewhat of a job and think that, you know, we've made a difference for the day. The one thing you have to understand is that you can't be outworked, meaning like it shouldn't be a situation where, you know, students are more enthused about being at the institution than you are. Students shouldn't um, get the notion that you don't actually want to be there, that you're just going through the motions. We have to constantly push ourselves on a daily basis to make certain that we are meeting the needs and expectations of our students. Because at the end of the day, the students are the number one customer. That's the first customer. And I'm not saying that, again, that we have to, you know, uh, spoon feed and coddle and whatnot, but we definitely have to rise to the occasion and make certain that the students are getting exactly what they need. It's really important that we continue to raise the bar for ourselves and our students and to make certain that the outcomes that they have when it comes down to customer service or the execution of a haircut 
and even, you know, making certain that they can pass exams, not by memorization, but literal comprehension, this gives us the ability to know that, you know, our day's work is gonna be valued. And if we don't value our day's work, just being honest with you guys, we're probably gonna have a hard time throughout our career. So these are just some of the points that I wanted to give you. Make sure you remember, you can't afford not to cut hair. You have to remember that you have never arrived. Let's make certain that we have snapshots of evolution. Always know that we're at mastery level. We are never to be outworked. And most of all, you always have to stay sharp, cut often, and study often. So that's it, that's all I got for you guys. I know it was a little lengthy, but I hope that you get a lot out of this video. And please remember, the students depend on us more than you know. And it is our obligation to make certain that we deliver on a daily basis. This is your boy, Tony Taylor, Barber Coach 2.5. Make sure you subscribe to the channel, share this, show some love, and I appreciate y'all, man.